Thank you for joining us and welcome to this special edition of Answers Network. I'm your host, Alan Cardoza. And if this is your first time listening to the show, know that every Monday from 11 a.m. to noon Pacific time, this show will bring on special guests that can inspire, educate, and in some cases entertain while bringing answers and options to making our lives happier, healthier, and more successful. Now, if you can't listen live, know that all of our shows, including this one, can be found at answers.network. And I'd really appreciate it if you could all do me a big favor. Please forward one of our shows to your social media group and to someone you know who can benefit from a particular subject. This is one powerful way that we can make a positive influence in the world together. And my guest today is Kim Dower. And Kim has published five collections of poetry, her most recent, I Wore This Dress Today for You, Mom, was called Fantastic by the Washington Post and unreservedly recommended by the Midwest Book Review. Kim, welcome to Answers Network. Thank you so much, Alan. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. Um, I, I believe Mother's Day should be every day anyway, because mothers really do a lot of work in this world. So uh, I hope everyone's having a great day and um, I'm happy to be here with you. And it's my pleasure. And, and I too want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. And you have written the perfect book for Mother's Day. So share with us a little bit about the book and what motivated you to write it. Well, well, first of all, thank you, Alan, for saying that. Um, uh, it's a book of poetry called I Wore This Dress Today for You, Mom. And it's actually a compilation of um, poems I've written in the last 15 years about being a mother, having a mother, losing a mother to dementia. Uh, and um, a lot of poems about my son. And I think put this collection together because I wanted to give a poetry book an arc, sort of a beginning to an end and tell a story rather than have poems be completely alone, uh, which a lot of poetry books are just books of poems that don't necessarily have anything, any connection to one another. But this book does, it tells a story. And uh, I found that throughout all of my books, uh, the the poems that touched people the most, that made them laugh or cry, and in some cases, both in one poem, were mm -hmm. poems that had to do with, with my experiences as a mother and my experiences as a daughter. So I put them all together. I gave them a story, which means a beginning, middle, end. There's a lot of new poems in them. And um, the collection I've heard, which is great, is very powerful, very evocative, uh, makes people think of their own experiences uh, as growing up, being mothers, losing mothers. Uh, and I'll tell you, you know, Alan, the, the reason why poetry affects us when it, as it does mm -hmm. is because it connects with us. We read a poem and we see ourselves in it. And that's the, that's what we want as poets for our readers to see themselves in our poems. Well, you couldn't be more right. Um, and uh, fortunately, uh, my brother and I, we, we lost our mother fairly recently. And when I started reading your book, and which, by the way, I love the fact that it was in a narrative. And as you said, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. And you feel like you're on a journey with you. And it brought back so many memories of, of my own mother and... Mm. Um, which which made it very powerful. It also made it to where I couldn't put it down. Uh, you know, I wow. I stayed up way past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it it does tell a story. And if you can share with everybody, I mean, I've not written I've not read a book that was written a, a poetry book that was written this way. 
which makes it very, very unique, but again, very powerful. What made you decide to write in this fashion and why don't others? Well, I can't speak for others, yeah, I know. Uh, but I'm not the spokesperson for other poets. But I think, you know, listen, I uh, a lot of these poems have been in other collections, but they were sort of hidden in these collections. And one day I just thought, I'm going to go through all my books and read my poems about mothers being one, having one and mm -hmm. see if there's a connection. And I pulled them all out and I started to see this story form. Plus I had a lot of new ones and I thought, listen, this, this could be a wonderful way to be able to absorb the poem, to be able to read it. You know, so many people say, I don't understand poetry. I don't get poetry. And that's a shame because a good poem should lead you in and you should be able to follow it. If you're a reader, if you're a person with a brain and you don't understand the poem, it may not be your fault. You know what I'm saying? It, so I try to write poetry that's accessible. Uh, and actually, I don't try to. I just write what I write. It turns out it is accessible. So I'm very lucky. <laughs> But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so what made me put this collection together? You know, honestly, Alan, um, my desire to have people like yourself who don't ordinarily read poetry, read this and like it and get mm -hmm. something out of it. And I thought that putting this collection together in this way would, uh, would be inviting and would allow people that experience because I love people to love poetry. It's such a wonderful moment in our lives. You know, I, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend recently and I was talking about um, good writing, but I was referring more towards like movies or television things. And, and, I, and I said that the combination of good writing and good acting is the fact that you are feeling an emotion. And it doesn't matter if that, if that actor is making you feel joy and or making you laugh or making you cry. It's, it's good writing and good acting that together gives you those emotions. And what I felt from your poetry was at times I felt myself chuckling and smiling and, and other times I wanted to cry. And to me, that to me is a sign of good writing because you're reaching people at an emotional level. Well, that's so great to hear. Uh, that's what I want, you know, and I, there's a great poet named John Berryman and he says, uh, he said, um, a good poem will comfort and terrify. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, people have written about my work and they say that I give in one poem humor and heartache. Yeah. And I, I, I'm all for that, you know, get them laughing and then make them cry. You know, if I, if I can do that, uh, I am, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, and also, as I said before, to see yourself in the poem. I mean, um, people always think that poetry is autobiographical because it's very personal. It's very intimate. A lot of poets use the I uh, or she, you know, rather than you. Um, but the, the fact is, poetry is not always autobiographical. We make stuff up just like any writer, you know, and wow. that's the joy of writing. Uh, I'm not here to tell the story of my life, but you will see a lot of my life in these poems. And that was the feeling that I had was I, I felt like I was I was getting to know you better as I was reading it, but I also felt the things that I felt were affecting me, you know, the, again, because of the fact that we're talking about Mother's Day and moms and stuff, uh, it was it was very emotional. Um, but at the same time, again, sometimes I was smiling because I was thinking, that's just like my mom would do, you know? Yeah, so, oh, you know, there's so many wonderful poems that I, I love to read. Um, other people's poems, I bring them in when I teach. Uh, we read them aloud, we talk about them. And uh, when you connect with that, especially the experiences of the mother, uh, boy, that really, <laughs> there's something about it that just really hits hard. 
Uh, and you know, poetry is the clear expression of mixed feelings. That's mm -hmm. why we write. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of things we don't understand. We write to try to put it in order, to try to make sense of it. And hopefully someone else will too. You know, a lot of poems are in couplets, which people, you know, where it's two lines and then a stanza break, two mm -hmm. lines. You know, couplets or tercets, which is three lines and a stanza break. And, you know, when we order the poems that way, it also is ordering the thoughts. It, it helps to sh sort of shuffle out these emotions and these feelings. A poem is a beautiful, you know, William Carlos Williams would call it a perfect machine. A poem mm -hmm. is like a perfect machine. And the way you break the lines, the music, the word choices, all of that builds that machine. So, um, yeah, you just got a little poetry lesson, Alan. I love it. I love it. And actually, speaking of lessons, and you mentioned teaching, um, let's talk a little bit about that, because I think one of the things that almost any writer that I've ever spoken to talks about writer's block, that at some point in time, they get stuck. So um, what kind of writing exercises do you do? And which ones do you do with your classes to help them break free of writer's block? Well, I tell my classes and they just, they give me dirty looks, but there is no such thing as writer's block. Okay. I mean, of course there is, but there doesn't have to be. And the reason for that, especially for poets, but for, for any writer is um, you open your eyes and look and write. And there's something that's going to inspire you, shock you, upset you, make you laugh and just write about it. So in poetry, you know, we call it prompts. So mm -hmm. a lot of us will go into the classroom and give a prompt. Um, so the prompt could be, um, I love it when he, or I love it when she, or I hate it when he, or I hate it. Just put that down and then write. Don't lift your pen or your pencil, or of course we're on the computer for five minutes. Just keep going. Don't edit, don't censor yourself. Just go, go, go. And in class, you know, we'll do these kinds of exercises and then people will read them aloud. And I guarantee everyone that there will be a great line in those in that automatic writing because the, you know, the subconscious comes out and you're not trying to write something. You're not editing. And there's a beautiful line in there or there's a title. Sometimes there's a full poem. Mm -hmm. So there are a million things uh, to be used as prompts. You know, I love, for example, and a lot of my poems come from headlines that I read in the newspaper or things I heard on the radio. So, for example, I'm, once, I'm reading the L.A. Times years ago, and there's a headline that says, the nudists are getting ready to pack. And they were leaving a nudist colony in the desert, you know, and that was the headline. And I thought, thank you. The nudists are getting ready to pack. What do the nudists pack when the nudists are getting ready to mm -hmm. pack? And so that was a prompt that I used. But you have to be awake and alert and, and allow these things in. I wrote a poem that I really liked, and it's in one of my books. It's not in this one. Um, or I heard on the radio. I drive around. I listen to, uh, I listen to KNX radio for the news when I'm mm -hmm. driving. And there's so many, I should write a book called KNX Headlines, but they once <laughs> said um, they're taking chocolate milk off the menu about public schools. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, what next? And that was just a, <laughs> just a prompt for me. So in other words, um, and also there's a poem in this book that you might, uh, might remember about James Garner, Goodbye to Yes, Jeff. yes. Yes, and and it, it was nice to see that you had a crush on him. Um, uh, I had yeah. on on my answer machine when we had answer machines. Uh huh. I, on my answer machine, um, I had the theme song <laughs> to his show to Rockford Files. That that and and it was, if you remember the beginning of his show, it was also his his voice on an answer machine. So I used his voice where he says, you know, 
you know, I'm not here right now, but leave your name and number and stuff. But I did part of the music and then I did his voice saying, leave your name and stuff. So anyway, so we, we have that little Rockford thing going between us. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's so great. Um, yeah. So, you know, again, it's a Sunday morning. I'm looking at the paper. I still read the newspaper. You know, I like to turn the pages. I like to get my hands dirty. Uh, and and it was James Garner died, mm. and it really hit me hard. Um, and again, I sat down and just did automatic writing because all these things came back to me because he was such an influence when I was a child. And then the '60s came back to me, and my mother came back to me, and I wrote this poem, um, "Goodbye to James Garner." And so, writer's block, I you know, wasn't necessarily going to sit down and write that morning, but this poem just came to me. Um, and I put it in this book because it has a lot to do with growing up and my mother and what was happening during that time. I, I would love it if you could share it with us. I have a couple others in mind, but I'd love if you could share that one. Okay, sure. I'd love to. Okay. Um, it's called Goodbye to James Garner. Fans loved him as Rockford, maverick, a man's man, had your back, cool, did the right thing. I loved him for being Doris Day's husband in a movie I cut class to see. Fifth grade, played at the Riviera, only old men and me during the day, went alone, told no one. But I had a gigantic crush on him. He was an OBGYN. She was a mom, marriage, in jeopardy. Couples in movies stayed together in the 60s. While out there, it was all falling apart. Women poised to flip their lives, months away from marching into the world of miniskirts, riots, shame, pillbox hats, flinging our boxy pink suit jackets and pumps into the sunset. Not even James Garner could have saved us. And this week, now, more unrest, more wars unfolding. I'm stuck on the headline, James Garner dead. When I was 10, I needed a man I could count on, even one holding aces and eights. I love that. Um, and again, I, um, I just want to tell people, if you get the opportunity, um, you know, this is this is a great book that will take you on a journey. Uh, and if you want to laugh, you might cry. It depends on your relationship with your own mother and your own life. Um, I highly re recommend you check it out. And before we go, um, Kim, could you read us one more? And I'd love for you to read the one titled Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Wow. Alan, I don't think I've ever read that at a reading before. I have well, to then find this it. is the perfect time because this is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. All right. Well, okay. Here we go. All right. I will say before I read it, read this one. It's an interesting choice because it's it is a little bit more surreal than some of the others, meaning there's a lot of imagination going on here and a lot of the imagery that um, you guys stick with me. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 kind of thrilled that you want me to read. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, but I'm also glad that that you've explained that because again, for those when you're reading the book, that. I feel like at times, again, you are, you're going off into somewhere where it's just you and that's, that's wonderful. Uh, so yes, you know, it, it isn't that it isn't a type of poetry to where you would think, wow, you know, everything flows just like this, just like life, you know, you know, they think it's supposed to be, no, it really is more like life that it isn't that predictable. And, uh, and I like it that way. Great. Well, this is a complicated Mother's Day. They all climb into her bed, bringing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All her children, her friends with children, their children, her mother, her mother's mother, the daughters she never had. 
the ones with long hair. She never spent hours braiding. They are all naked except for the scarves which they wear on their heads or covering their shoulders or tied around their waists. It's Mother's Day and they are ready to celebrate. Who's hungry? Her mother asks all the mothers and their children. We are all hungry, they say, as they grab the hard boiled eggs jiggling in a blue ceramic bowl in the middle of the bed. We are all thirsty too, say the little ones, holding up their sippy cups, their scarves sliding off their heads, their mothers ferociously tying knots that won't slip under their chins. Her mother's mother is so old, she doesn't even know it's Mother's Day. She doesn't even remember not being a mother, has sweet butter in her veins, has made so many beds, she doesn't know why she's in this one. Are all these people, she asks one of the unknown children. I don't know, says the little boy. I don't want my scarf. I left my robot in my room and I forgot to turn him off. He's probably left the house on his way to the park or maybe back to Jupiter or getting ice cream. My mother is taking too long and I want to go home. You know, when, when, when I read that, one of the things that I thought was that, you know, that a lot of this was some of your feelings as it was relating to dealing with your own mother while she was dealing with dementia. And that was that was the feeling that I had. And, and I've unfortunately also recently within the last now, it's probably closer to a year and a half or so, uh, lost my stepfather to dementia. And um, so that was that was the picture that I got with that particular one and and felt that Mother's Day was the time for people to hear it. Well, that's nice, Alan. I, I'm really happy you got that from it. You know, I, to tell you the truth, I, until you just said that, I, I wasn't really clear <laughs> about that. And I, it makes sense, you know, for me, it was the idea of being a mother sometimes, for, it's beautiful and the whole Hallmark card idea of Mother's Day. And, but there's just so much stress and anxiety wrapped up also in being a mother and the day to day and are we doing it right and what we try to do for our children and and those old i remember the mother's days growing up where it would be my mother and my grandmother and my aunt everybody piling into the car trying to make it right the husband's trying to pick the right restaurant you know there's just a lot of expectations and always the little kid just wants to go home <laughs> Want to play with his toys. Yeah. With his toys. And and so, um, but when you talk about the dementia and all of that, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the road, you know, my mother went down on and I was there with her throughout. And it's scary when, you know, you see your own mother losing her own memory and asking five times in an hour, what are you doing these days? And you just keep repeating what you're doing. That's why poems are written, so we can clear these issues up. Well, and, and I didn't, I wasn't planning on having this particular conversation or focusing so much on the dementia, but I do want to tell a very touching story. <clears throat> I was on an airplane and uh, I was flying and there was the, uh, at the time, there was this couple, and at the time, I thought of them as older. <laughs> um, I would say they were probably in their mid-70s. And the, the husband, every time the, the, the wife would wake up, the husband would reach in a bag and he would pull out a photo album. And he would immediately start showing her pictures and, I, and her anxiety would start to go down. And after she went to sleep, he noticed that I was looking, that I was intrigued by what was going on. And he said, you know, you know, she has dementia. And so each time she wakes up, he has to remind her as to who she is. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was one of the most loving things 
that he was there. He had pictures of their wedding. He had pictures of their children. He had pictures of everything that he knew that she loved. And that's what he made it a point to show her. I just thought it was one of the more beautiful things I've seen. That's beautiful, Alan. And I, if I'd seen that, I would have written a poem. That There's a poem right there. You know, and I would call it, he shows her pictures. And, you know, there's the poem. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's why I'm saying that writer's block doesn't need to exist if you just look around and tell what you see, tell what mm -hmm. you feel, tell what moves you. And you could make things up in that poem. It could be about your own mother. But there's the impetus for the poem is the emotion, the feeling that you had, uh, you know, is mm -hmm. what creates the work. And that's beautiful. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll look forward to when you write a poem about that, letting us know how it, how it comes <laughs> out. Okay. Um, so um, where can we find the book? And is it also, is it in an audio form? Um, Tell us more about the book. Yeah, I wish it was, and there was rhyme. So I wish it was an audio, but the book has not been, I should, I should investigate that. Uh, anyway, you know, the book is, should be in your favorite independent bookstore. Good. But it's of course available on Amazon, good old Amazon. Um, but I'm about to go do a little book tour. I'm going to Boston. I'm going to be reading at a store called Trident in Back Bay. I'm going to New York, reading at Shakespeare and Company uh, in Los Angeles. I'll be at Diesel. I'll be at Book Soup. Um, the book is at a lot of independent bookstores. So always, I always would love people to check their bookstores first. Uh, but of course, there it is on Amazon. Okay. And if, if they would like to get a hold of you, maybe for your classes or something, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, well, I have a website uh, and it's um, www.kimdowerpoetry.com. And um, there's a way to get in touch with me there. Okay. I love to hear what people think of the, of the poems. And um, yeah, that's, there you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on for this special edition of Answers Network as we do a Mother's Day show. And I couldn't think of anyone else that to have on that couldn't that I would want to be on here for such a perfect Mother's Day poem. Thank you, Alan. It's really been a joy to talk to you and um, happy Mother's Day to you, too. Thank you. And for everybody out there, have a beautiful Mother's Day and go to answers.network and you can subscribe to the show through Apple Podcasts, through iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, Rumble, Spreaker, and so many more popular uh, platforms. And if you like what you hear, please leave a review. I want you to know that it'll help us reach more people and we greatly appreciate it. The next time you're on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, please remember, stop by our page, check out some of our latest shows, and if you like them, please like us and spread the word. So for everybody out there, have a wonderful Mother's Day and be good human beings and be with us soon at answers.network. <laughs>